Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So right now I'm working on the Iron Man Live After Death uh, ESP LTD. I believe it's the M10 or M15, something like that. Guitar body. I've got a lot of it basically completed. I got everything routed out. I got my holes drilled. I've got the string ferros front and back put in. I've already buffed out the back of it. Now I'm working on the top. I'm kind of going over a lot of these edges over here to make sure there is no rough edges or anything and nice. everything is nice and smooth. It does have kind of a sharp edge going around it. Not like razor blade sharp where you're going to cut yourself. But it's got a nice edge on there as far as basically what the guitar looked like before I started doing anything to it. Putting the edge back, wet sanding it, using a block to sand give, really gives it a nice look. So I've already hit it with all the stages of sandpaper as far as getting this thing down, it's leveling, and then uh, getting it up to a point where I can start buffing it. So right now, like I said, I'm just going over everything. It seems like everything feels pretty smooth. Everything is routed out. String ferros are installed front and back, and the back has already been buffed out. But I want to make sure that this top, and the back has got some artwork on it too, but I want to make sure this top is, you know, just as nice as the back. So what I've got, some 3,000 grit sandpaper. Like I said, I already went through all the stages of sandpaper. The higher the number of grit that you get for sandpaper, the more finer it's going to be. And you can get a lot finer than 3,000 grit. But three, anything else than 3,000 grit is kind of like... Uh, I don't know. It's you don't have to go any higher than three thousand to get a really nice wet look gloss finish. If you don't take your time when sanding it, and don't take your time as far as trying to remove the sanding scratches or uh, marks from the previous sandpapers, you're going to have hazing. You're going to have. It may look like well, it's got a nice reflection on it and stuff like that, but when you get it in certain angles of the light. It's got a hazy look to it. Black doesn't look black. Black has got like a gray tint to it instead of just being, you know, a nice black finish. And even if you, you know, spray with a matte finish and put some type of a clear on top of that, uh, it's still going to have a matte finish if the sanding and everything else is not done correctly. And that's the one thing that uh, uh, I'm really picky about, and especially with my finishes, is making sure that one finish uh, just because I did the top a certain way uh, doesn't mean I'm going to do the back any differently so everything gets the same attention as what I've worked on before what I've worked on in the past and what I'm working on now so right now I'm just gonna go over this and let's see here let's see how this works I'm using a pencil eraser as my sanding block why not it works just as good as a regular block and the sanding block that I have is much bigger it doesn't fit inside the cup over here to wet sand it so I'm going in a circle motion because what I'm doing is I'm trying to cut out the scratches of going side to side and you can do this by hand if you wanted to I mean you can sit there and take your sandpaper and go like this with it if you wanted to but just make sure you don't go like this, all right? With the higher grit, or the lower grit sandpaper, sorry, when you go like this with it, you're leaving each fingerprint in your finish. And you can actually see it when you get it into the light and move it with the light. You'll see that there's darker where your lines are. There's more paper, or more um, sanding grit. Where your fingers are, 
than the whole paper itself. And you don't want to do that. You want to utilize the whole piece of paper. So going in a circle motion with a lot of your sanding helps out or going side to side with your hand and not going forward or back with your fingertips. I've seen a lot of people do that online and it, it's like, you know, if you had a body shop and you were sanding like that, anybody who would have the car outside or under fluorescent lights and, you know, the sunlight or in a garage, they look down the side of that car and they'll sit there and see that it's wavy. And that's one thing that you don't want to do when doing a finish is have it look wavy. If it's supposed to be a flat surface, then it's supposed to be a flat surface and that's how it's meant to be. And paint will actually show, even though it's very, very thin, but it'll actually show the wavy waviness in a finish when you'd seen it wrong. So I've already went over this quite a few times. I've already inspected what I needed to look at and I already see that I'm pretty much ready to go as far as, if that sounds funny, it's because I'm kind of doing this at the same time. Uh, pretty much ready to go as far as doing my uh, buffing work goes. But again, I want to make sure that everything is nice. Now when you have like an area that's kind of tipped over and stuff, you want to make sure you go over that evenly. You want to make sure you go over to ev nice and even, especially where the bend is, because that bend can actually look wavy as well too. Now with the epoxy resins, they're a lot harder than a standard clear coat, okay? Um, next thing harder than this would probably be a ceramic, and they do make a ceramic paint uh, or doing something with uh, uh, oh, what the hell do you call that? Shit. I can't remember what it's called now for some reason. Powder coating. There you go. Uh, powder coating is very hard to do as well, but this is not a metal surface to adhere the powder to. It's done electric like electrically. So yeah, you want to make sure you go over everything evenly. Now I am hitting these edges, these edges are really sharp after I did the uh, the routing on this thing and if I'm, this has got like a little bit of a pad on it so if it's hitting that edge and kind of smoothing that edge out as far as not being so sharp then I don't mind that. Now the only one that's going to be seen is this cut out here, this one is going to be covered up. I got to show you guys what I did with the, uh, and I still have to finish it up, but uh, the pickup and the pickup ring and everything else that I got for this thing. Uh, I gotta show you what I did with it. So yeah, this is kind of looking, it's going right where I want it to be. I mean, it's nice, nice and flat to begin with. The only thing I don't like about this is using a t-shirt, you could see the silk screen, the dots in it. Especially when, I mean, on a shirt, like this shirt here that I got on right now is an Iron Maiden. Uh, I got a shitload of these shirts, and these are awesome. Iron Maiden, these things feel like they're silk. They're uh, printed on the cloth, but it's not, like these are uh, silk screen with paint. You don't feel it at all. It's really, feels like it, it's been like sewed this way. I mean, it's just really nice. Uh, I don't like how these turn out using a t-shirt because you kind of see the silk screening in it a little bit so when I do the plus they're a little bit off of color as far as the original goes like I did with the trooper and then when I printed out the pickup cover uh, yeah it was a little bit off as far as the color goes which doesn't make a big difference to me Everybody knows, uh, you know, what it is and everything else. You can still make it out. But I can need to get a program that I can edit the color and change it to get the tint more closer to what I'm putting it on. And this one is no different as well. So right now, this has got a nice flat finish to it. I end up drilling one hole in the wrong spot, so I have to... Uh, have to fix that so I filled it with CA glue and once I put the pickup ring on it I can redrill that hole again so I'm done with this this worked out pretty good 
Now I'm not showing the rubbing compounds or the waxes that I'm using because there's a certain Canadian out there who is copying off of me as far as uh, what I've been doing and or trying to do what I'm doing and using the same products. So I'm not showing you the rubbing compounds and shit that I'm using anymore because right now I'm using something a little bit different. I'm putting on my plastic bag or whatever you want to call it. I ordered a bunch of these plastic uh, aprons for not getting shit on my clothes because this likes to sling itself all over the place. Alright, so I shake up my rubbing compound because that's you want to mix sometimes you separate and you want to make sure it's mixed properly. Alright, so the other thing I need to do is I need to flip this towel over because if it's a little bit wet. I don't want that. So we'll go ahead and flip this over. This side is not damp at all. Make sure there's no glue or anything on here that is going to affect scratching or anything else to finish. Alright, so I'm centered with the camera. I am centered with the camera. And like I said, I'm not showing the compounds I'm using anymore because somebody else likes to copy off of me and uh, yeah I can tell I'm almost out of this stuff because I use it a lot all right so I'm putting the compound on the pad I'm gonna go ahead and kind of dab it around you don't really need to use a lot of rubbing compound for doing shit you do however have to go over it a few times to achieve what you're looking for. You know, make a rubbing compound that first time is, is the charm. You're gonna kinda have to go over a little bit. Alright, so let's get uh, let's get busy over here, huh? Alright, so I wanted to do this in real time. Sorry about the noise. 
uh, so you can see how long it takes to kind of achieve a, a wet look when you're doing a buffing. And again, you know, the rubbing compound ain't going to work really good unless you have all the sanding done. And again, with a higher grit sandpaper, the better results you're going to have. Now this is just one, one buffing, and it already looks ten times better than it did before I started. Alright, so it's kind of check this out got some spots where I didn't rub it off all the way so let me get that out off love these microfiber cloths So let's check this out. Yeah. She's good. Not great, but she's good. And like I said, you can see the cloth and the lines of the cloth. Kind of like if you took your t-shirt and looked at your t-shirt, you can see lines either vertical or sideways. Uh, that's exactly what's going on as far as in here when you use a t-shirt. Alright, so let's hit this again. battery check I made a charging station outside the room over here so I got multiple batteries on there
the tricks of doing this, getting a nice puff job, is keep moving around. Don't sit in one spot too long because you'll burn right through whatever you, your finish is. I use a high-powered, uh, high-RPM drill. This Hitachi drill that I got really is nice for doing this. And I prefer uh, something with more RPMs on it than something that's a lot slower. And the reason being is because it seems with these smaller pads, it works a lot better getting a really nice finish. Getting a real nice finish done. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it really comes out and it really looks good. Try to get all the rubbing compound out of all the cracks around the edges of stuff. Shake the dust out of your rag from the rubbing compound. That helps out. Alright, so let's take a look at this thing now. No rubbing compound left over. Oh yeah. Now I'm going to put a little bit of wax on this, let it sit, wipe off the wax. Meanwhile, I'm going to get into the pickups. Alright, so I have the Noiseless Dragon Fire single coil pickup over here. Here is the pickup ring, and here is the humbucker. Yeah, I'm going to start putting epoxy over them. So I've got the pitcher pretty much close to what's on the body. Now the hard thing is, is that's a t-shirt on the body. These are printed off the internet that I ended up having to crop and cut and everything else. Uh, the problem is, is that trying to match this up perfectly with a t-shirt it's a little bit hard. Same thing with the Trooper guitar. It's the same way. Trying to match up the pickup cover that I end up making. Uh, the artwork that's on that with the body of the guitar. Not so easy because two different things here. You don't know if the artwork that's on the uh, t-shirt has been stretched out in any way. Well, could have been because I stretched it over a body of a guitar. And then you have these things here that are printed off the internet at high resolution that are off of the actual album itself. There's a difference. So matching them up, I got them as close as possible. So now I'm going to start putting a little epoxy on them. Got everything masked off here, elevated, so you're not sitting on top of anything. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pour this over it. Again, this stuff is self-leveling. And I end up leveling the pickups to make sure that they're going to be fine as far as which way direction this epoxy is going to be headed once it starts to level itself. Now I want to coat everything all the way around it. I've got them masked off, as you can see. The wires are all masked off. Fuck it, I'm just going to pour it on there. Seems to be a lot easier doing this way anyways.
All right. So this is pretty much submerged. Even off the edges a little bit. When I hit the heat on top of these to get the um, bubbles out of it, it'll start to kind of flatten out. The reason why I'm kind of flooding this, it is a lot of waste with this epoxy. But I could see where spots are missed and I want it to be even all the way around. Alright, I'll go ahead and hit the humbucker. Alright, so if I leave it this thick, what's going to happen is it's going to be a little bit taller. So I go ahead and I hit it with a small scraper. Because I just want to coat these. I don't want them to be like the thickness of the uh, epoxy when you pour it. So I just want a nice coating. This one here it doesn't matter. That one's fine. So I'll find some place to put this. Alright, so I got them coated. Now it's time to get the bubbles out of it. Without burning anything. All right, so I'm gonna let these sit. Let some of the bubbles that are on the actual print to start to come up to the top, because you can't leave your lighter or with a torch or whatever you're using on these for too long because it actually damages the epoxy resin and it could have damaged the artwork that's underneath it that you're trying to seal in. So I'm going to come back to this a little bit later and hit it again with the torch. All right. So I end up changing out the whole stock wiring on this thing plus electronics. I put a push and pull volume on there that is now going to be a coil split for the humbucker. I end up changing the blade switch and putting a three-way kind of like a Les Paul style switch inside there. And then the tone control is a push and pull as well where it's going to be a dual stage tone with a 22 cap and a 67 cap.
So now we're getting to the end of the video and end of working on the body of the guitar. So as you can see here, I've got the humbuckers installed. The uh, pickups are somewhat matching the body itself, the edges, the sides. Everything looks really nice on this thing. So if you look at the pickups uh, as far as the artwork goes, you can see it's a little bit different. It's a little bit off from lining up with the original artwork that is on the body but it's very very close and it's close enough to say well I'm gonna leave it that way and I'm gonna put a roller bridge on this so that's the front and that's the back so you'll see some black lines, darker black lines underneath the clear and I did that on purpose uh, I wanted to have some type of a a, uh, a different look to the back of me, got my fingerprints all over the where the neck is. So that's it. I mean, this is the guitar, and she's pretty much done as far as the body goes. Now it's to finish the neck. I'm waiting for. Well, I want to do something with the neck, but I'm kind of waiting on doing it because I'm not too sure. Got some dust on there. So yeah, that's it. Not too shabby. Not too bad. I like it. ESP LTD body is done. This is the Ibanez Live After Death themed guitar and it's pretty much not much I could do besides keep the dust off of it for now. I gotta work on the neck a little bit but I'm gonna talk about what I've done here besides of what you saw. So this pickup ring right here this is for an Ibanez guitar. I ordered a bunch of metal pickup rings for Ibanez and just in case I came across another one, was it the S470 or something like that? Uh, it's the one that's got the um, uh, hinge bridge on there. And I ordered a bunch of them. Now this is a used one that I saved. It's a metal pickup ring. I could spray paint it or whatever and recode it. And I can even have it sent off to be re uh, chrome plated if I wanted to. And you know it'll be as good as new this was a good idea because I'm covering it with the artwork and sealing it with the epoxy resins and it's going to end up being a permanent part of the guitar as well and the nice thing about it being metal is it's not plastic it's not going to twist on you it's not going to warp on you it's not going to do anything it's going to stay in one spot so because of that I only use two screws to mount it so I mounted it one screw here and one screw here and I'm going to look through my paints and see what I got to like touch up these guys so they blend in more. I wanted to have a nice clean look. So with this guitar here, I ended up copying the original artwork off of the album cover and printing them up on a thank you. Let's go ahead. This is the paper that I ended up printing them on. And this stuff is really, really tacky. Once you put it on there, you're going to end up, it's, it, because it's vinyl, you're going to end up stretching it and if you try to pull it back off. So once you lay it down and you end up noticing that, well, it's a little bit off, forget about trying to pull it off and re-put it back on. You're going to end up messing it all up and you have to reprint another one. But these are off the original album cover and they are different than what's on the guitar. That nothing I could do about that. I tried resizing it. I tried to... Uh, change the artwork to try to get it to even with all the lines and stuff there's nothing I can do so the cloud matches this cloud the headstone matches here the shackle matches perfectly with the uh, uh, arm that's on the body of the guitar this one here matches right where it's supposed to be the only thing I couldn't get right was this flame this flame does not match up with the top flame over here that's on the body. Again, this is a t-shirt and this is the original album art. They don't match as far as what, uh, you know, what's going on here. So I got it as close as possible. And there's really not too much that I, I could have done to get it any closer than what it is. It looks clean. It looks good. It doesn't look bad at all. It blends in pretty damn good. I do have to get um, probably Photoshop. I'm going to get a hold of my buddy and uh, put Photoshop on a computer so I can get the tint right as far as this goes. So far, it doesn't look too bad, but this blue here, 
you know, there's none of it inside of here, and there is a little bit when you look at it around the body of the guitar. And I needed to get a little bit of orange in the headstone area over here, but everything else seemed to be pretty damn good. The lightning bolt seems to match everything. I mean, it just, I couldn't get any closer than what it is. Um, I used the volume and tone knobs. Again, I changed out the switch with an Epiphone switch. I got a, a black roller bridge on here, which I don't have a Cosmo black one, so I don't want to put chrome on here. Uh, maybe I'll order a new bridge for it. Got the original strap locks on there. Now, the neck on this guitar, I wanted to incorporate some of the things that you would find on the album covers of Iron Maiden. I don't know if you guys ever noticed it or have ever seen it before, but there's a lot of hidden stuff in the album covers of each Iron Maiden album. Now, the Live After Death, I couldn't find, and I even looked it up online too to find out if there was more stuff that was hidden in the album cover that I can incorporate to, onto the neck. And I'm screwed with that one. So there's only two things that are on this, but um, on this album art that is kind of like, you gotta look for it. One is the black cat with the halo, Another one is, actually there's three things. Another one is a snake, like a cobra or something like that on the headstone. It's kind of a shadow of it. And another is the uh, artist's logo, which is like, oh man, it's it's back over here someplace. On, um, I th believe it's on one of the headstones. And other than some of the writing that's on the headstones uh, that are kind of like, I don't know if they're joking or what, but they're, they're kind of goofy um but even now the black cat you'll find on every one of them all right and killers has got a bunch of black cats on the album cover and a few other things that are hidden in there too there's uh black cats on the roof there's black cats in the windows there's some black cats walking around and there's something with the black cat but there's always going to be one that's got a halo around its head on the, um, what was it? Uh, damn, I can't remember the album cover, the album now. That's a shame, too, because I really like Iron Maiden and I really should know all this. Somewhere in time, there is a lot of hidden stuff and little messages all over the album. So if you look at the album art front and back, uh, you will find a shitload of stuff. You gotta look for it though. Some of it is there, you could see it, but some of it isn't. Um Ah oh god, what the one with the pyramid on it where Eddie is sitting in front of uh the pyramid. I can't remember what the hell that album's called for the life of me. But that one has got a lot of hidden things in there too. There's one part of it that says, um uh, it was a Kilroy that Kilroy was here, which is the guy with holding over like a fence and his nose is sticking up. He's looking over, trying to look over the fence, and it says something underneath that. Um, another one says that um, Indiana Jones was here, and then there's a date underneath that. Uh, shit. There's just a lot of different stuff that, that you don't catch by just looking at it one time. You got to really kind of look at it. And I want to incorporate a lot of that stuff into the neck, but the problem is there's not a lot of stuff on the Live After Death album to incorporate into the neck. So I got to figure out something else or um, something different maybe. Maybe where the 12th fret is, I'll pop out that logo and see if I can't incorporate the black cat into that. Um, but I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to use the original tuners. There's nothing wrong with them. They got the original back plate. All these spare parts that I have sitting off to the side over here are reusable for something else. There's nothing wrong with the ESP pickups, a mini humbucker over here, which can be split and everything the way they have it wired. Um, the five-way switch is still decent. There's really not much wrong with that. The only thing that I noticed with this is a difference in the original screws for the neck. So if you look at the original screws for the neck, see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's blurry. But one's got a point on it and the other one's been cut off. So two of them are being cut off. So I got a feeling that the neck was uh, not deep enough for the screw. You know, that's going to come through the other side where the uh, 
fretboard is, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to put the truss rod cover on there. I am going to put a um, either a bone nut. Um, if I have a bone nut that's black, otherwise it's going to be a graph tech nut. Because I know I got black graph tech nuts that will go on this guitar as well. So that's it. You guys have a good one. Thanks for watching. Um, I am going to do something with the uh, Trooper guitar as far as playing it goes. It's up on eBay right now. And uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.